broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang them, the bombs bursting in. The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. All right, so you see, usually, nice right, with the stage out. spike. Oh my gosh, such low damage. There would that be absolutely uh, nice uh, jab there. Oh, that, that was, that was, oh, that was. So now Pikachu really having his, more of his way with Jigglypuff here. A bit, very nearly a knockout. Oh, there it is. Drag down Folks. into critical with Thunder. Yeah. Right, so. Nice. With the down spike. Yeah, because. Oh, oh, gets up with the fun dog at night. Nice. Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Oh, come on. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> Man, neutral <laughs> with two kills on that one. They're both literally at 150. Nice! Yeah, Great job. Oh, oh nice. good reflect. All right, so you see, usually nice right, with the stage out. spike. And welcome in everybody. Sorry about that little technical snafu. We are here for our production of Super Smash Brothers, ready to get rolling here this evening. I'm Caleb Calkwood, and tonight we have Southeast Missouri State. So we're going to be playing them in just a few minutes. We're going ahead and getting everything set up. Uh, I'm your host, Caleb Calkwood, the head coach of the esports team here, and very much looking forward to seeing what these guys have to do tonight. They're rare and ready to go. Tonight, we'll go ahead and introduce our cast our players for the evening so let's go ahead and take a look at who's in the arena so you see right there in the skyloft powered by registrar usa uh we have right there on the couch will howard folk hydra so he's going to be playing this evening and then of course over at the computer talking to the other team and making sure everything is working well we've got seth dawson who is the captain scourge and then you look over there at the other computer, that's going to be Charlie Greet, Frisbee. And uh, what happened to Caleb? Oh, well, that's not good because I locked him out. So <laughs> you'll have to let him back in when he gets here. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal. <laughs> All right. Uh, but Caleb Ote is here as well, and he is going to be playing this evening too. So uh, whenever he does get here, uh, he will be playing. Just had to. Uh, um, you know, run there and we'll have him back here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got up this evening. Yeah, we, we've just got the uh, Southeast Missouri State game. We have a couple of future um, games going to be coming up in the wings, but the only one we have tonight uh, looks like is going to, or the only one we have tonight is this game, and the only one we have tomorrow, we actually have a rescheduled Rocket League game. So we're looking forward to that. But while we're waiting to go ahead and get everything set up, let me tell you about one of our fantastic sponsors, and that, of course, is Whataburger. Now, one of the things I have not talked about as much recently, but I really need to pump because, you know, spring is in the air. You're starting to get some of those get-togethers, and 
Sometimes you may not want to cook all the food yourself. Sometimes you need a little help. And I know that I do as well. I'm a bachelor. I can't cook for like 24 people. So <laughs> I got to I gotta get some help. And, you know, the people that help me are Whataburger because they have the great Whataburger box. You can get the Whataburger box with or without cheese. It has all the toppings you can buy with it. You got tomatoes, you got lettuce. But it doesn't come like all together. It's in pieces like it's it's an assembly line kind of like a buffet and so if you want to have the best burgers in town but you don't want to necessarily grill them yourself or maybe uh you have a little trouble with the grill um maybe if that's the case then you want to go ahead and just get whataburger to do the catering for you and do all of that uh for you so go ahead and check out their 10 whataburger burger box and uh you can order that from the app just like everything else so go ahead and download your whataburger app today and if you do you get a free whataburger with that as well and you can earn points towards more free food uh, i know that i'm actually getting pretty close to my next reward so i'm going to be heading over there and get the chocolate milkshake or maybe the dr pepper shake i'm, I'm feeling a dr pepper shake right now so uh be sure to head over there to whataburger at your favorite app store so it looks like they're in the middle of a lag test right now so we should be getting underway here pretty soon uh we will just Hopefully there's no lag or nothing giving them any grief here. Uh, but yeah, looking to be a good game tonight. The guys have been uh, working on what to do for this game. And they've been practicing a, a few of their technical like fundamentals. One of the things that I've noticed that I've been trying to, to get them to work on is their like neutrals. So neutral B, neutral air. Uh, and another thing that... It, uh, I've seen that they've been doing that we've been trying to work on recently because we had a, uh, a practice where I was trying to go over this um, safe approaches and so that's one of the things that we talked about quite a bit so hopefully we have uh, some some fruit born from that practice you know we'll see how they how they do with that and um, one of the things that's really fun about this team is that you don't see them play the same characters over and over and over again they definitely have mains but they also have other characters that they'll uh, sub in and out and so it's really fun to see them play with all the different characters that they've got so really looking forward to this game and really looking forward to see what they do with it so with that being said uh they're going to go ahead and be getting starting here soon let me go ahead and pull up chat so i can let you know what's going on there uh it looks like south missouri Spain. yeah okay here we go uh So they are going to go ahead and be jumping in. And it looks like up first, we're going to have Hulk Hydra playing as Sora. And we've got the other team playing as Pichu. Now, that is really interesting because I think this is actually going to be good for Will because he's played Pichu a lot. Because our captain, Seth, he mains uh, Samus, but he does play Pichu every now and then. All right, nice Thundaga. Good first blood drawn by Faulkner. Oh, and Pichu starting to get really aggressive in the air now. Playing much better than he did to start out with. And Will with an unfortunate Sonic Blade that wound up got, getting shielded. Oh, and I like where his head's at trying to use the counter there. Uh, just didn't wind up connecting. Good counter there. All right, and a nice air sweep. Oh, and an up throw into, or sorry, down throw into Thunder, a pretty classic Pichu combo. So now the score is tied again, but Will with the damage advantage for sure. And gets Blazaga off. All right, so Pichu short range getting the better of him there. Didn't quite have enough space to close. Oh, but gets a really powerful smash attack, and, and very quickly this game has started to even up. So, Will's going to have to be a little more careful with his Sonic Blades. Like, definitely don't be afraid to use it, but, yep, got him again. That Pichu figured out the distance for his Sonic Blade, and he's able to space just enough to where he gets on the outside and is able to do it again. So, um, Will probably needs to be a little bit more careful about using it. All right, and the down A. So now we're back to even. Faulkner tying it up, 10-10. Can Will get this first one off? Nice counter there. Like 
All right, Will needs to do a little bit of mix-up here, but a good recovery by him. All right, and gets the down A. Gets another one, though he takes a little damage himself. Oh, and the three count, uh, the the three combo. All right. You know, Will taking some heavy damage here, but doing so in such a way that he is doing damage himself. Oh, and gets a smash attack on the back for the kill. So, Will comes within an eyelash of beating him there. But, a really good match. He did an extremely good job there. Uh, he just uh, seemed like his biggest problem there was he relied a little too heavily on Sonic Blade. And that Pichu just figured out a Sonic Blade game, and he didn't. He got a little predictable there at the end with just a lot of floaty and then down A, um, which again still did significant damage, but it wasn't able to actually bring him home. And so, uh, just needs to be a little bit more conscientious about his mix-ups there, be a little bit more unpredictable. And uh, but overall, still a fantastic match played by Folk Hydra did a great job of sort of messing with their Pichu and putting him in places that he didn't want to be. So, uh, asking for the bans now, and let's see who, what we've got here. Well, uh, looks like they're taking a minute to decide. All right, so this is a very promising start by Faulkner, only down by one, uh, and really looking forward to seeing what they do with it here. They're in a good position, and I think that Charlie, if he can do some significant damage and keep it close, uh, then, you know, see what we've got left in the tank, whether it's Seth or whether it's Caleb up next, whoever it may be, uh, could be really interesting. All right, so it's going to be Frisbee next, and he's going to be playing with Piranha Plant. So that ought to be fun. They have banned uh, Battlefield, Yoshi Story, and Kalos. So we will be playing on something other than that. We don't know what. One of the fun things about Piranha Plant is he's just a fantastic wall. Uh, he can do a really good job of, and he's not even really necessarily, Walling may be a little bit of a uh, misnomer, because he's got great range, but he doesn't really wall people out the way a lot of your traditional range characters do. He just kind of likes to sit in one place and do damage from virtually anywhere on the stage, and that certainly could be interpreted as walling someone out, but not necessarily, and so he's just a very different kind of range character, and Charlie plays him really well, so here we go, we're going to have Pichu have to drop two of his stocks here to begin the match. And quick attacks right down to the bottom. And quick attacks back and then falls off. All right, and poses are up and we're good to go. All right, so right away with the Pichu. But Pichu utilizing that aerial game to the best of his ability. And it looks like one of Charlie's answers is going to be his own neutral air. Going to hang out in the poison cloud here. Then come down on him from the top. Tries another Patu, but gets electrified. All right, and a grab into up A. All right. Fighting for control of the stage here. Pichu trying to use his little thunder jolt there to give himself some leverage. All right, coming down into shield, and then Pichu able to get a classic uh, throw down into up air, or uh, sorry, throw down into down B.
All right. So putting some shield pressure on him with Poison Cloud, but Pichu getting very aggressive in the air here. All right, Pichu at very high damage. Just a decent hit would be able to knock him out. Can Charlie do it without losing another stock? Oh, it doesn't look like it. So now, very quickly, Faulkner is at a pretty significant deficit, down three stocks. All right, and goes for the down air. Charlie really having a hard time getting a hit on him. Trying to go for Patu, and I mean, it makes sense because Patu's easily one of his best moves and would definitely get a kill on the very light Pichu here, pretty much no matter how hard it hit. Yeah, trying to go for a grab there, but missing a little bit. Wow. And Pichu, with 185 damage, is able to get off another kill. So, Southeast Missouri now on top. Uh, very, very surprising way for that to end. Charlie was able to have a decent amount of success on that first stock, but uh, that Pichu just sort of went ham on him there at the, the very end. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he just, like, turned on the afterburners or what, but uh, that Pichu suddenly just got real aggressive in the air and got really aggressive with offstage stuff, and it wound up paying off for him. Uh, didn't make a whole lot of very unsafe moves, and Charlie just had a really hard time capitalizing and getting around Pichu's speed. So uh, here Faulkner is at a little bit of a deficit, 10 to 6. Going to have to figure out what they need to do here to be able to uh, dig out of this hole. So I don't know who they're going to play next. Uh, I think that they may go with Seth here just because Seth knows Pichu so well. Uh, that might not be a bad pick, but then at the same time, you know, Caleb knows the Pichu matchup pretty well, not because he plays Pichu, but because he's played Seth so many times playing Pichu. So I really think that either way, you could see these two, um, either pick I think is fine. Uh, they may want to save Seth as the anchor, so it really does just depend on what they decide here. But uh, they'll be picking here pretty soon, I'm sure. And it doesn't look like... Okay, they're, they're, they have decided they're going to send in Caleb Ote, so he will be playing this evening. Uh, looks like he's going to be playing as Pit, and they have issued the same bans. So they've banned Battlefield, Yoshi's Story, and Kalos. It is interesting to me that they're going to have Caleb play Pit. Um, not that interesting, just interesting. I don't know. I, I guess it's because he has that wide attack radius. I mean, at least wider than all of the other mains that he has that I can think of. Because, uh, you know, Caleb is an interesting uh, player. He likes to play characters that are faster, more nimble. He likes to play some of the speed characters. We've seen him play Greninja before. Uh, we've seen him play Pikachu. Um, he, he actually mains Pikachu in a lot of the matches, so uh, maybe that's why they didn't go with Pikachu in this particular round is because they wanted to uh, let him use his knowledge of the moveset but use it in the form of a different character, which may be a smart play here. All right, and Pichu is down. And they're going to taunt. All right, so goes in for a dash smash, but is punished when he's shielded and then grabbed. Would be a little bit easier if he had 185 damage that Charlie put on him in the last round. All right, so. Wow, an aerial down B. Really good combo. 
by the Pichu player. Pit struggling here a bit. Uses the Orbitars to get him off of him. Oh, but misses there and gets grabbed. So you see Pit there trying to put a little air pressure on him by sending in the arrow first and then following up with an aerial combo. I don't even know how he was in the spot to get hit by that one, but all right. And uses the exact same combo for the KO again. Uses the same kill grab. And I mean, it's hard to... Oh, there he goes. Pit with the side B. Launches him off stage. So that's going to be the start of, uh, that's going to be the, the first fighter from their side. Sorry. Um, not sure exactly what they, uh, what they're going to go here. Um, Caleb has the opportunity to do a ban. I'm not sure who he would pick. See, Pitt, um, I think the only thing that Pitt would, I can't think of actually a stage that Pitt would have a disadvantage on. Maybe Yoshi's? I would probably ban Yoshi's, but we'll see how they go. All right, so we're going to see a Bowser here next. So probably going to have some tough guy combos coming in. Get to see that. So, anyway, uh, we'll see where they go with this one. I'm not sure if they're going to... I don't know. If, I, if I'm Caleb and I'm going to adopt that strategy, I probably do play Pitt as a bit of a keep-away character, but he's not... He, he's okay at that, but he's not great at it. He really only has his... Um, uh, his, his best keep-away move is going to be neutral B with the arrow and going to be sort of his jump, short hop, uh, neutral A is going to be good because it, it has that big circular motion that covers almost all of Pitt's body. But uh, especially with Bowser having that command grab, that's one of the reasons you're going to see this matchup be a little bit more trouble for him because that command grab, the fact that he could grab or do command grab is going to be a problem because Pitt relies so much on his orbitars and grab goes right through the orbitars. So uh, it really is a good, it is a good uh, Pitt, or sorry, it is a good matchup against Pitt. So uh, you're probably, that's, I would imagine that's what you're going to see out of them. Okay, so they have picked Yoshi's Island as their stage. So we're going to have a Pitt versus Bowser on Yoshi's Island. Should be a good match. And I believe... Caleb is down to two stocks. Oh, it looks like he's down to one stock. It's four, four to nine. So he's going to have to sacrifice two here. And we're underway. Bowser with the Whirling Fortress. So what you're seeing here is uh, Pit is trying to wisely bait Bowser into the air, and you see that that Bowser is not having it. He's perfectly fine to just sit at the middle of the stage while the clock runs down. <laughs> and I mean, if I'm him, I don't blame him. I've got three stocks. I've got two more teammates behind me. Uh, I don't do anything that risks me. I, uh, th th is really any risk to me. I'm just going to play it safe the whole match. Oh, and with shield pressure, that's going to be game right there. So, very quickly, I 
yeah, Caleb just gets his shield broken and dazed, and then that's if you ever do that against Bowser with most characters, that's ball game. You just there's not much you can do after that. That drop kick will get you every time. So uh, very quickly, Faulkner has lost the stock that they had there, and it it comes down to the captain. It's all down to Seth. So Seth's about to step up and gonna have to face down three <laughs> three other guys. So and uh they have banned Battlefield, Halabastion, and Kalos. So If I had to guess, just knowing Seth, I would suppose that he would pick Pokemon Stadium 2 here. That tends to be one where he's really comfortable. Oh, he's going town and city. Okay, well, didn't see that one coming. That'll be interesting. Now, Samus is a much better matchup for Bowser. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of charge shots, a lot of side Bs, um, some bombs maybe. Uh, you're going to see a lot of those like uh, grapple grabs that he uses, probably a lot of forward, forward air, that, that fire move that he uses. Uh, Bowser has decent recovery, especially for a heavy, but you know he can only go so far. And so because of that, you're going to see Seth do the best that he can to exploit that. And no taunts, they get right into the action because nobody has to throw away a stock. Whirling Fortress gets him on the edge there. But he misses with the screw attack slightly. So Seth may want to play a little bit faster, Samus, just to take advantage of the speed difference between the two of them. And there he goes, comes in from the back. Double forward air, triple forward air on this one ledge guard. Nice. Bowser able to get a little bit of fire damage. And you can see one of the appeals to Bowser is he's only hit maybe two or three times uh, with that Whirling Fortress and then a couple of other sort of light attacks. And he's already up at 120. So uh, you can see why Bowser can be so deadly here. Samus uses his bombs to sort of discourage Bowser from trying to come up from behind him. Oh, and gets him in exactly the same way. Bowser bomb gets him twice. And throw into forward air. Charge shot goes out. And Whirling Fortress gets another one. That's actually a fairly good ledge guard mood, and I don't know that I've ever seen another Bowser use Whirling Fortress's ledge guard. And up throw, but you know, Bowser is ginormous, so up throw is. It would have definitely killed almost every character in the game. Not Bowser. And again, gets him with the ground pound there. Yeah, Bowser here just too heavy for Samus to be able to kill him with up throw. Tries to get the back air, which probably would have killed, but it wasn't able to connect. Oh, and forward air gets him for the KO there. And Bowser Bomb. See, that's one of the reasons that I was a bit surprised that Seth chose Town and City. 
I would figure he would have picked something that had a little bit more platform play on the stage, especially considering, like, his up throw is not going to kill Bowser even at high damage on the low platforms, but if he's on the upper platforms and gets a grab, maybe. So I'm, I'm actually very surprised he didn't go with, like, either Pokemon Stadium, Battlefield, something of that nature. And Bowser trying to get cheeky with that Bowser bomb again. That's one thing that's funny about this particular Bowser player is normally when you see Bowser players, they use down A as opposed to ground pound a lot, but this one seems to favor ground pound. It's a little bit slower, but it does do more damage. Oh man, and uh, Southeastern Missouri getting into some juggling here. Tries to use the drop kick but misses, but then dodge rolls behind. And that's going to be a body slam for the win. So that means Southeast Missouri has won this one. They've just gone up one nothing, so, you know, very good opening match by them. Faulkner's really going to have to change up some of the players that they're using here, do something different, uh, change up maybe some of the characters they're playing, and, uh, you know, do hopefully get into a position because it's much easier to kind of roll with it when you're not, when you actually have the ability to um, stay ahead and sort of keep pressure on. And it's much harder to dig yourself out of a hole. And it looked like Faulkner got some really early pressure on and it paid off. But you can tell since then it's been all southeastern Missouri. So uh, if we can just get sort of an early lead like we did last time, but instead just hang on to it, I feel like the Faulkner Eagles are going to have a much better chance of being able to take this one on. But of course, we'll have to see where that goes and what they decide to go with it. Um, they're going to go up with Pichu again. And as a response, they're going to send Will in again, which is interesting because uh, Will struggled a little bit against that Pichu to start out with. So I'm not sure why they're going to go with that particular lineup or that particular matchup again. Um, maybe they feel like he just did so well to start out with. Uh, and he did. I mean, he got two stocks relatively easily. And so. If he can just avoid some of those predictable combos that he had last time, he'll actually do really well, I think. So as long as he can change up his game just enough to be able to throw the Pichu off, I think that this may not be a bad opening pick, even though he didn't wind up winning last time. I mean, he had more success against him than anybody else on the team, so I can't begrudge them making that pick. All right, so it looks like we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Pichu and Sora. So... This will be a good rematch. Go. Alright, starts out with a down air and a forward smash. Air sweep. And another air sweep. So Will playing it a little bit slower here, a little less aggressively, which probably works to his favor here as long as Pichu doesn't play hyper-aggressive. I think that that's a good strategy. Just kind of take your time, set up some nice combos. Oh, and the nice down A. And Pikachu's tiny body not able to really do much with that. Oh, and the down A gets the early kill. So again, Faulkner takes first blood. I would be careful about hanging out too much above him, though, because remember, Pichu does still have Thunder. And exactly the same kind of kill as last time, but thankfully Sora able to uh, recover. Oh, and punishes him with the counter for that. Down A. And another down A. Tries to use Faraga to sort of spam out. 
Oh! And uses the forward tilt. No, that was forward smash. Forward smash. Oh, and tries to counter, but just mistimes it a little, little bit. And it's enough for him to be in a bad spot here. Uses the counter there. Uses Blizzard. I will say one thing that this Pichu does a lot, which is very characteristic of Pichu characters no matter how they play him, is that he likes to jump up and come down. Will might be better served if he was using a little bit more up tilt than up, um, up A. You know, because Sora's up A is actually ridiculously powerful. Oh, and uses a Sonic Blade to push him off the side. Tries to use Thundaga, but isn't able to. Down air. Oh. Come on. Ah. Down air the opposite direction, but he was he was on the corner. That is a kill anywhere else on that stage. Literally any other spot on the map, that kills. But he was in the one spot where it didn't. And winds up losing a stock because of it. Man, rotten luck. Because the thing is, Will landed that combo if Pichu had just flown the other way. Wow. That really should have killed. That was the Pichu that would not die. <laughs> I don't understand how he... Like, the first one I get it was just because he had great DI, and he was on the one spot on the entire stage where that would not kill that Pichu. The second one, I have no idea how he survived that. <laughs> Absolutely no idea whatsoever. Granted, uh, Sora's multiplier is not the biggest counter multiplier. It's a 1.4. But still, that really should have killed that Pichu. I am I have no idea how he survived that counter on the second try. But either way, Faulkner with a win. Only up by one stock, but it's enough to give us an advantage. And if Will can take even just one or two stocks off of the next guy, that puts Faulkner in a really good position. So let's hope that that is the case. Now, this is a surprise. I'm going to be honest, this one kind of blows my mind. They are sending in Incineroar. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, the, the confused look on Brandon's face, my producer, if you could see on the other side of this camera, like sheer dumbfoundedness. And I'm honestly in the same boat. Why Incineroar? But, you know, you don't want to get overconfident. You don't just want to assume that you're going to win this thing because they picked a character that is generally considered not a great character in the game. You know, maybe somehow they have a guy that's just a really good Incineroar. I don't know. They wouldn't be sending him in if they didn't think that he was good. So maybe maybe it comes up as a surprise. I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm hoping Will just three stocks him. That would be awesome. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. So they're going to be on small battlefield. Uh <laughs> So here we go. We're underway. Now, Will is missing two of his stock, so he's going to have to do the dive of shame. Three, two, one, go. Down A. And another down A. Taunt. Uses Stopka. Oh, and uh, I believe that was counter. Wow. So, like I said, you know, they apparently, and I don't have a problem with them doing this. Brandon, if you want, you can leave the scoreboard up whenever you're coming back to me. That's perfectly okay, just so folks know what the score is. You don't have to worry about fading out. Um, like I said, I mean, Incineroar, you know? Traditionally considered a very terrible uh, character, but sometimes you get somebody that can use one and just gets a, gets a combo off, and that's exactly what happened. Did a good combo and a decent ledge guard, so props to him. Now, this is kind of a surprise. We're throwing in Seth to counter the Incineroar. <laughs> 
Uh, I do think it's smart to ban Small Battlefield, though, at this point. It seemed like the stage really helped him. All right, so the bands are going to be Final Destination, Kalos, and Yoshi's, but we get to pick the uh, arena, so that's perfectly okay. I don't know. If I'm Seth, oh, he goes with Town and Country again. All right. We'll see. All right, so we're going to see the captain jump in here, and what Seth is going to probably do, I would imagine, is he's probably going to use his superior air game to mess with him, because Incineroar does not have good recovery. He has a decent vertical recovery, but a horrible horizontal cover recovery, and his recovery, if it misses, it kind of kills him. So not a great air game for Incineroar, and I think that that's what Seth is banking on, is him being able to just tear through this Incineroar and use a superior air game to do it. And I'll, you know, maybe he puts up a better fight than we're expecting. Let's hope not. I'd love to see Seth just steamroll the guy, but, you know, that may not happen. We'll see. All right, kind of testing one another out. And you can see there, this may be a match where Seth also doesn't want to rely too heavily on his shield. Just because uh, even though Incineroar's attacks do a ton of damage, he's got a grab and a command grab. And as we saw from the last match, this Incineroar really likes grabs. So may want to be aware of that as well. Oh, nice little side B there to stack on some damage. Um, and I'm surprised Seth didn't go with his signature up forward air. But maybe trying to save that for a time when he really needs it. Woo! That was uh, a little terrifying. He saw his, uh, his grapple took a weird directional hop and uses back air there, grab, throws off stage. Oh, and a back air from the Incineroar as well. And uses screw attack. Oh. So I think what was happening there is that Seth was trying to use a charge shot but accidentally I think that was counter uh, but anyway um, all right so throw into forward air oh and gets the spike wow did not expect the match to go this way for sure Oh, misses there with card shot. And wasn't able to make it back with recover. Seth had pushed him off just enough. goes into screw attack all right so Faulkner now really behind the chains here down by two so Man, just of uh, <laughs> it's just funny to see how some people can just sort of major in the minors, as it were, just do extremely well with a character that competitively just isn't viable. So sometimes that happens. It's just kind of a weird, quirky thing. And the thing is, sometimes you can do well with that just because people aren't used to seeing him very much. <laughs> 
So uh, there's a little bit of a surprise element that can go into that, but yeah. Um, Seth just w wasn't able to seal the deal on that Incineroar for whatever reason. But... All right, so they pick Smashville, and they're going to be sending in Frisbee with Piranha Plant. All right, and it looks like we're ready to start here. It is an interesting strategy sending in a grass type against a fire type. So Incineroar's stock is gone. And the taunts. We're ready to start. And poison bomb. Um well that was really strange. Not sure what happened there, but it's just like Charlie his recovery didn't work or something. I don't know what happened. Oh, and uses Patu. And the spike. And Incineroar able to combo. Whoa! For a second there, I was wondering if he was going to be able to recover. And falls there to Piranha Plant. Oh, and uses that forward knee to get the KO. That brings Faulkner down to their final, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that brings us to our final, final fighter who is going to be Caleb. Not sure exactly who he's going to pick. He has a very wide category of different uh, characters, but it'll be interesting to see who they, they want to send in. Um... If I were Caleb, I'd go in as Pikachu. I mean, that would just be my pick, just because of the superior agility, the ability to combo out. Like, Incineroar has Tough Guy, but that's still not going to save him for most of Pikachu's combos. So that would be the one that I would pick. But, you know, he's been playing with Pit a lot. He may feel more comfortable with him tonight. That just may be the, the vibe that he's in right now. So we'll see. You will have to pick soon, though. There is a two-minute limit. All right, so he has officially picked Pikachu. And that will be an interesting matchup. Like I said, uh, I think that Pikachu's advantage is that he's going to be really good at the combos. 
Um, he's going to be able to stun. Pikachu actually has better stun than almost any character in the game that I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe Robin's is better, but of course Pikachu's able to use it more often, so even though his stun may not last as long, it's going to be better with him than with Robin. Uh, so just overall, yeah, I think Pikachu's the smart play, and it looks like they're going to be on small battlefield. Interesting choice. Considering that that was the one that the first, like, Incineroar first picked when he came out there. Uh, but, you know, if that's what Caleb feels like is going to be his best bet, then by all means. So, here we go. Incineroar versus Pikachu. Fare thee well, Incineroar. And down goes Incineroar again. So here we go. And we're off. Goes for the grab again. And as you can see, and this is one of the things that's been frustrating the Faulkner guys, Incineroar doesn't have to hit you much to hit you a lot, to hit you for a lot. And so uh, with just about three attacks, he's already got the Pikachu up to 64. And tough guys through that thunder. Caleb really needs to, uh, going to try to set up a combo here and gets grabbed and suplexed and that's going to be the first stock. Pikachu with a dash smash attack and a forward air followed up by a little thunder jolt and an up neutral air. Oh, and just misjudges it there. Winds up walking right into a smash. All right. Come on, Caleb. He's at 110. You got this. A lot of shielding, not a lot of grabbing. Oh, and winds up uses the suicide bomb to get him. But there you go. Um, that's going to be ball game for us tonight. Looks like uh, Southeastern Missouri is uh, going to be taking that one. So uh, unfortunately, the Eagles fall with a score of 2 nothing. So what we're going to do is here in just a second, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a quick break here. And then we are going to go ahead and get you ready for the postgame show. We'll be right back. Preparing leaders for the river region and beyond, Faulkner University's Harris College of Business is distinctively different, focusing on ethics and character development in the classroom and building ethical foundations with our new Ethics Institute. Living the mission of Faulkner University to glorify God through education of the whole person, emphasizing integrity of character in a caring Christian environment where every individual matters every day. As a student at the Harris College of Business, I saw firsthand the mission of Faulkner University. My professors there not only taught me, but they also mentored me. They encouraged me, they cared for me. They instilled character and integrity into me. I mattered every day. That mission hasn't changed. Harris College of Business continues to provide its students with the tools they need to succeed in today's business world. Welcome back, all. We're here at Regitar USA High Res Arena, and we appreciate you being here for our Smash Bros game against Southeastern Missouri State. Unfortunately, the Eagles did not come out on top tonight. We lost by a score of 2 nothing against South, uh, Southeast Missouri, 
And uh, we actually, because he wound up being the, I thought the MVP of the game, we were going to get Will Howard on, mm. uh, but he's dying. So <laughs> he's over there coughing his brains out. And, uh, you know, I, I sympathize. I was like that the other day. The pollen's got to mm-hmm. me, too. So, uh, and then Seth is feeling a little under the weather, too. So, like, really, you were the only one on the team other than Charlie that wasn't, like, in a, a state of disarray. So, uh, we're here with Caleb Ote. Thank you so much for being here, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So, uh, I just wanted to ask you a couple things about what we were witnessing earlier today on the game. One of the things that uh, I really picked up on is it seemed like Will was the only one that was doing uh, really well against that Pichu. And uh, traditionally, like, Sora is not necessarily an awesome counter to Pichu. He's not a bad mm-hmm. one, but he's certainly not like, who, who's a counter pick for Pichu? Well, we've got to go with Sora. Yeah. So what was it that you think made Will so successful? And then we'll talk about what, okay. what the rest of the game. Uh, well, for, for some of the time he was playing, I was warming up, so I didn't see the whole game. Right, right, but, right. But um, from what I, what I could see, I think we kind of threw out characters that are kind of widely used. Like, I use Pikachu, and Seth uses Samus, who's by mm-hmm. no means like a... Um, a rare character, and even Prana Plant to an extent. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a weird character. Kind of, uh, its attacks are weird, but it, it's kind of in the meta. So a lot of people will use those characters. Um, right. I'm not sure. I can't pinpoint exactly why it was so hard for the Pichu to deal with with Will Sora, but I think, especially um, because Pichu relies so heavily on his aerial combos, mm-hmm. and Sora is not only a floaty character, but He's really good in the air, and his jumps are so weird. Like, the, the way that he jumps is just different than any other character. And so I think it kind of threw him off. And then Will was also able to punish him um, when he eventually returned to the ground. He was able to punish him really hard. Yeah, used a lot of counters, mm-hmm. I noticed. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely some smart gameplay by Will. So let's talk about some of the things that you were doing on the field tonight. Uh, I noticed that, especially in your match against Pitt, um, you were struggling a little bit, but once you got your combos down, you seemed a little bit more comfortable. And then, of course, that finishing with that side B that you used just mm. um, really, I, I thought, was a, a well-placed move. So uh, what were some of the things that you were noticing with your pit gameplay tonight? Um, so I've been, I've been playing a lot of pit recently. Uh, mm-hmm. and I, just, I like all his, all his different tools. I think especially with, um, it was really unfortunate that Browser took me out with, with the shield break because I think, Pit is really suited to play well against Bowser because he. Can, oh, ag- agreed. I was kind of surprised yeah. that they even picked Bowser to play against. Yeah, yeah, Pitt. yeah. Because like Pit, Pit is has so many different tools. He can keep Bowser off. He can attack him anywhere in the air with his arrows. Mm-hmm. Um, the super armor, uh, with his side B and also his down B can push him off. And then his neutral air is one that I I utilize a lot, and it's just like a get off me move. So, um, I think I think if he hadn't broken my shield, I would have I would have had him. Yeah, and that's one thing that surprised me because you and I both know, because we've seen really good Bowsers before, mm-hmm. and they almost always rely on their get down move being down A. Mm-hmm. This one was a little strange in that he used down B, which you don't see a lot of Bowser players mm-hmm. use. I mean, not, yeah. not with that regularity mm-hmm. that he did. Uh, but, you know, it wound up being effective for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to uh, bash the, the player in any way by saying this, but oh, I, know. I think he was a... He was a very skilled player, not not so much technically, but that he knew his character very well, which which is also a, a, a form of strength because he knew like he might not have, might not have been able to pull off the flashiest combos, but he knew what to use and when to use it. Mm-hmm. And uh, him being able to just come down with such strength is and break all of our shields because none of us really play that heavy character, so he can he could really just just brute force a lot of us, and it was hard us to kind of finesse him yeah and that's one thing that i was kind of thinking about too watching that is that he may have actually been and i'm not saying taking advantage in an uh, illegitimate way because it's perfectly legitimate but he may have been actually taking advantage of the fact that he was playing bowser in a way that people aren't used to seeing mm-hmm. people play bowser and so that may have been one thing that kind of gave him an advantage too is you guys were expecting him to do this or do that and he did something else um, but that seemed to be, uh, to me, to be uh, one of that Bowser player's big strengths. Now, I also wanted to ask you about that last match um, where you were playing Pikachu. I thought Pikachu was actually a really good pick for that particular matchup, um, and uh, I thought you did really well in it, but it did seem like you were having a little bit of trouble stringing together some combos against Incineroar. What was the issue there? Was it just like 
was he tough guying through some stuff? Maybe some stuff that we didn't see on screen because of that? Uh, no, no. I just I need to work more on Pikachu's combos. Um, hit hits his combos kind of just come together in the air, so I haven't had to work so much on those. And even um, Fox to a degree, like there, a lot of his kind of just come together because he's so fast. But with Pikachu, I haven't. I just haven't worked uh, on him so much. And I noticed like when we were playing the Pichu. Um, mm -hmm. his he had a really strong combo game, and that's what like more than more than his strength or anything else that he had. That was what made him so dangerous, and so I I mm -hmm. can tell that's something to work on. Okay, sure. well, definitely some things to take going forward, and some things to improve on. So thanks so much for being with us, Caleb. It's always a pleasure to get to talk yes, to you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, Caleb. absolutely. Always good to talk to a fellow Caleb. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is of course Caleb Ote or Jade Boy, uh, as we know him as well. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. Before we do go, though, remind you that we have a little bit of a weird schedule this week, but we do have tomorrow at 6 p.m. That is going to be a Rocket League Blue game versus Benedictine University. And, of course, our producer, Brandon, over there, he's going to be leading the charge into that one, hoping to have a really good one. This has been a difficult game because we've had to reschedule several times. But we've, we finally got it. We think we have a time that is set and hopefully is not going to move. 6 p.m. tomorrow. We plan to be here regardless, so uh, you'll get to see some fantastic gameplay from them tomorrow at 6. Be sure to watch all of our social media on that. And then we'll have more Rocket League coming up that following Monday starting at 6. I think we've got three games lined up for that Monday, so very full week next week. is going to be the week before spring break. I know you guys are all oh, yeah. looking forward to spring break uh, week after next, so uh, we will be, of course, trying to wrap up all of our games then. And uh, don't want to get too far ahead. Don't want to put the cart ahead, ahead of the horse. But we got League of Legends, and hopefully we'll be, uh, we're, we're still waiting to see that if they had a limited number of spots, hopefully we'll get accepted into that league. Uh, but we're hoping to get in there, and if we do, we will let you know ASAP via all of our social media. So that's going to be it for us tonight. A special thanks to Brandon Dishman, who was working production and helping us stay on the air, make sure that everything was going well. And a special thanks to FSN for supporting us and, and helping us with that. This has been an official FSN production. So we're going to wrap it up one last time. Your final score tonight is Southeastern Missouri State 2, Faulkner 0. We're going to call it a night here, and we will see you again at 6 p.m. tomorrow for the Rocket League Blue Game. In the meantime, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The National Anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching, and soar Eagles!